you know that there's a place where you can go to when you're feeling tired or when you're just headed with the world? Where you can go, get yourself killed infinite times, uh, step on anything, crush on anything, uh, play any sports without having to get off the couch, which is a bonus. Um, of course, I'm talking about video games. Now games, like I said, is a place where you can escape reality, uh, unwind, and uh, and just be yourself or be an imaginary character that you would, that you would love to be. So what makes me credible is that since I was a little kid, my dad, I mean, I think I was too young to get a game system, <laughs> but my dad bought me a, an Xbox, the very first Xbox. And what was funny was that I didn't even know how to work the controls, but I would like, I would enjoy watching my brother play, looking at him play. The first game that I had was a, a Bruce Lee game, where uh, you were Bruce Lee, they would attack your temple and you were able to beat people up. And I was like, hey, I, that, that's interesting, I, like, I, like, I would like to beat people up. <laughs> and, um, well, there's been studies that show that video games can be therapeutic for people that have uh, health issues, and they've also been able to improve the way your brain functions. And a lot of people would think that the very first game that was made was Pong, where you just hit the little bricks. But it's not, and I'll tell you in a second. So my main points that I want to get through today is explain what the first game, what, which was the actual first game that was made, um, how it affects people's health, and the effects that it has on people's brains. So now that I previewed my main points, I'll tell you how the first game was made. So before the Xbox One, PS4, PlayStation 3, all that, before you even had to go to an arcade to play Pac-Man or, or play Donkey Kong or stuff like that, they had a game called Tennis for Two. Now, a lot of people believe that the first game that was made was uh, Pong. Uh, the, according to Brookhaven.gov, it had no no author and no date written. Uh, the first game was introduced on October 18, 1958, which was table tennis. So table tennis is kind of like Pong, but it sends is it's it's a little different. And what was what was uh, amazing about it was that it wasn't like your everyday game system now where you have something small or something where you can carry around in your bag. That gaming system was in one of those big computers that was about from like here to over here. And the screen was about this small. And it had uh, two box controls. One where you could spin it for the, for the imaginary uh, racket to go up and down and hit the ball. So that, I'm, I'm guessing that they, Pong got their idea from that because this game was out before, before it was. So the controls, it wasn't nothing too complicated like they have nowadays where they have buttons to uh, improve shooting or stuff like that that you can put in your control. Before it was just a small box. It had a little knob where you can turn for the imaginary racket to go up and down and then a little button to push when you want to hit the ball. So now that was the first game that was uh, invented or the first game that was made. And it wasn't something that you were able to take home with you or, or buy so you can use at home. People had to go into a museum to be able to go. It was a, it was a technology institute where you can go in and, and play. And they had lines for people to come play. So now, for my second point, I just gave you about the insights of the first game that was created. And now I'm moving on to uh, the way it helps for uh, health, uh, brain, health, and health issues. So now, uh, according to uh, uni uh, news, U U University News, from U University of Utah, uh, article made in September 19, 2012 by Carol uh, Bruggers, a professor from the university. There was a study made to people that had um, 
uh, illnesses like had depression. They had uh, uh, they had suffered from a stroke or a heart attack and stuff like that. And they made a study. They had those people play video games like Sims or or uh, 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 first person shooters. And it was it was therapeutic for them. Uh, to, and with her research, she said that it gives people with they, it gives people with like cancer or diseases like that a fighting spirit, and it, it it helped them keep on continuing to to become better. So now, after that was the only research that I could find on that. Now moving on to my third reason is that. Uh, it's it's helpful for the uh, for brain for brain activity for your brain functions. Uh, according to HuffingtonPost.com, published on November seventh, twenty thirteen, with no author, uh, they had seventy two people play uh, video games. They had people play Sims, and they had people play uh, Counter Strike. And and after the research was done. It showed that people that had played the, the Counter-Strike game, which was a, a strategy game, they, they were able to improve in a, the way they, they thought. Their thinking process was much, much faster. They were able to get tests faster, uh, done faster. And another research showed that people, they had people play Mario 64, and they had people, they researched people that didn't, uh, that played no video games. And people that played Mario 64 had more gray matter in their brain, which was good for navigation and their memory and strategic planning. So to conclude, video games can be therapeutic. They can help uh, develop your brain faster. They help people get things done faster. And um, uh, and my main points were just that uh, video. The, I gave in information about the first video game made and how video games have certain health benefits for people that have diseases and helps you uh, develop your brain faster. For a memorable quote, just go out and find a video game that you'll like. It'll probably help you relax before finals. <laughs>